Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Sophia Metropolis. I'm an artist and today we're going to be comparing two types of affordable gouache with one type of expensive gouache. I've made a bunch of videos about the Himimiya jelly gouache set which I really love and really enjoy, but I wanted to compare them with another affordable gouache option that's tubed, the Arteza gouache, against one of the most well-known brands in gouache supplies. Windsor & Newton's designer's gouache. So not even a student grade, but an artist professional grade. Just based on the way that these things are graded, I know that the Windsor & Newton is going to perform the best, but I'm really curious to find out how the affordable paints measure up. Before we get into it, if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. I make videos about all sorts of art-related things, occasionally some lifestyle things, but mostly art-related and a lot of gouache stuff, just because I enjoy it and you guys seem to like it. So if you're interested in any type of that content, please subscribe to my channel. I would be thrilled to have you here. I'm growing this channel. We're only, only going up from here. Okay, let's start. So first, obviously, let's start with pricing. The Himi Mia gouache set, I have the set of 18, and right now on Amazon, that price is $23 for the set. This is a really great affordable price, especially if you're getting into the medium, you've never used anything before. $23 for a set of 18 paints. Each of the 18 jelly cups is 30 milliliters, which is kind of a lot of paint. So you're getting a huge bang for your buck on this product. For the Arteza paint, I have the set of 60, which is $48 on Amazon right now, which includes 60 12 milliliter tubes, which is a lot of money up front, but if you break it down, it comes to less than a dollar per tube. So that also is a pretty affordable price. They do additionally make an Arteza set of 24, which is $25. So again, right around a dollar per 12 milliliter tube of paint. When it comes to the Windsor Newton, I have only five colors primary red, yellow, and blue in 14 milliliter tubes, which are about $10 per tube. And then I have a black and a white in 37 milliliter tubes, which are about $16 each. So total cost per tube of paint is significantly higher, which is why I have so few, because any color that I want, I mix with my primary colors. Now, when it comes to this comparison video, because I only have the primary colors in Windsor Newton, I'm going to be comparing them with their counterparts in each of these sets. So with that comes the understanding that if you're going to buy the more affordable paint, you are going to get more paint anyway. Just based off the fact that you can get 12 to 18 colors in a set versus one tube of the fancier gouache is something to note. But I have had the Windsor Newton gouache for for five years now, and I don't use it very often, which is why it's been able to last this long, but it still has lasted this long. So something to note. Now let's take a look at them. So the first one that we are going to be picking the paints from is the Himi gouache set. I've talked about this gouache set a ton before, so if you've never seen any of those videos, you can check them out up here. There's a whole playlist where I do all sorts of ridiculous things, including make a Bob Ross painting with this gouache. Like I said, because I only have the primary colors in my Windsor Newton gouache, we're going to use what we have. We're only going to work with the primary colors from here. So I'm going to use this red, this yellow, and this blue. And then the whites, I honestly don't know which one is supposed to be the titanium white and which one's supposed to be the zinc white, and I can't tell the difference. So I'll just use whichever, and then the black as well. For the Arteza set of 60, there is a color swatch on top. This one's kind of cheating because I've already swatched this paint, but we're still going to go through it and compare how they behave. But I've made this swatch sheet, which I usually use when I'm pulling colors, just because it's much more accurate than this grid system that they have. The colors don't completely match up to what they have. Honestly, if I was picking for what I would want to work with, I would actually probably pick the rose because it's closer to magenta. But because we're using reds consistently throughout this, I'm going to go with the crimson red. I'm not going to do the scarlet red because it is metallic. So it's got glitter in it and I don't need that in this situation. And then as far as the blue, cerulean blue, mid yellow, and then the titanium white and the noir black. I also made a little system along the side here. So I have the A side and the B side and then I just numbered them based on what order they are. So it's easy for me to find them. My biggest complaint about this box system is the storage. It's just too much to get to the paint. So our mid yellow is B1. Here's our mid yellow. And then for the Windsor Newton, I did mention that I've had these for five years, so bear with me on them. So I've got primary yellow, primary blue, primary red. And then I have this almost empty permanent white, which I'm gonna see if there's anything left in it. I'm pretty sure this is mostly dried up. 
and this ivory black which I've been using and it smells rancid and I probably should not have been using it. I googled it and I was like what is the actual harm of using rancid paint and it turns out the harm is inhaling mold into your lungs. So I'm actually gonna throw this one away. I got all of this paint when I took design one in college and I'm pretty sure we had two of everything and then I haven't touched either of these so these should be in good condition so I'm probably gonna use those just to give the Winsor Newton a true chance. And then as far as paper goes I'm using this Canton cold press watercolor paper in a 9x12 140 pounds or 300 grams. Typically in my work I like a mixed media paper which is around 98 pounds but for the sake of this video I figured a watercolor paper is best because it's the true material that you should be using gouache paint on just because it's the most receptive to the paint and the water. So some other materials I've got for my setup are a masonite palette a palette knife which is necessary some really cheap synthetic brushes i'm pretty sure these green ones are liquitex they're all really low cost synthetic brushes there's nothing special about the brushes and then i have two cups of water and a pipette also by the way if you're interested at all links to everything that i'm using today will be in the description below i started with the Hemi gouache just because that's the one that i am most familiar and comfortable with it's the one of the three that i use the most so i figured it was a good jumping off point my plan for these swatches is to do a a swatch of each of the primary colors across this black line just so we can check the opacity and then go in and create a color wheel just blending some secondary and tertiary colors so that we can see how they blend what the color wheel looks like using these colors and then I just went in and did a little bit of a lighter tone as well on top of that probably the biggest piece of information I took out of this one was I noticed how streaky the Hemi gouache can be again I do want to emphasize that the Hemi gouache is a student grade gouache so I don't have super high expectations for its performance but I've been using it a lot recently so this is gonna be interesting to find out my first reaction immediately off the bat with the Arteza gouache was I was really impressed with the way that the ink went down. It went down super smooth. The blending was really beautiful. I was actually really surprised by the quality of this paint. I definitely have been underutilizing this paint in my practice. I should have been using this more. For the price, I think this paint is great and performs really well. And the blue was significantly more opaque than the other two colors, but otherwise the red and yellow look pretty similar to the Hemi gouache. You also can tell with the Arteza that the colors are a little bit brighter. They pop off the page a little bit more than the Hemi do. So it was interesting to have them side by side in that capacity. For both of them, the blacks were definitely the most opaque of the collection for obvious reasons. By the time I got to the Windsor Newton, I realized that these paints have significantly dried up, but luckily gouache is a water-based medium, so I just went straight water to the tube. And since I used the other two paints pretty wet as well, I wasn't really concerned about how this was gonna affect the transparency. What I did notice right off the bat is the brilliance in the colors of the Windsor Newton. As you can see, there's a purple, which the other two paints don't really achieve. Now I do think that the primary red is a little bit closer to magenta than the other two paints, but even still, the brightness of that color wheel compared to the other two, it makes the Hemi gouache truly pale in comparison. So while I was impressed by the quality of the Arteza, and I would actually rank the Arteza up to par with the paint quality of the Windsor Newton, I was most impressed by the pigment of the Windsor Newton. So clearly what you're paying for when you pay for more expensive paint is the quality of the pigment and the saturation that goes down with that. As you can see in these comparisons, the purples don't really exist for the Arteza and the Hemi gouache. You can't really make the purple in the same way that you could with the Windsor Newton. And of course, both of those sets come with purple, so you wouldn't necessarily have to mix that same color. But mixing primary colors is a great way to see how these paints interact with each other and the quality of the pigments. So all in all, I am really impressed with the Arteza and I will probably be using that a lot more just because the quality is really good and because the tubes are small, it's portable. But I also have a new belief that the only way to waste art supplies is to not use them, which is definitely what I have been doing with this Windsor Newton that's been sitting in my closet for the past five years. So I'm really excited to start bringing this back into my rotation as we go forward. Let me know in the comments if you were surprised by any of these. I know I was. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and give this video a like if you learned something new. I hope you did. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sophia Metropolis and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!